Hello lovelies, hello family, this is Kimberly Purpose and welcome. Today I'm going to do another video with you guys, but first I want to share with you all my Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center. This is the website. It says here, therapy. Feel like you're falling apart? Let us help you find the missing pieces in your life. Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center PCWC will provide a variety of therapeutic counseling services geared towards helping individuals, families, and the communities. Our goal is to assist individuals holistically through our transpersonal counseling psychological services. This is my website, you guys. You can check it out. Also, I am also on Psychology Today. We work with you all on your budget, you know, if you have insurance or you don't, you know, uh, we work with you. Um, you don't have to have the insurance. Um, but you should check me out. Check out my website. So let's go on ahead and continue on with what we're going to talk about. In the last video, I was talking about uh, pretty much about the copper colored races and about the uh, one. Uh, based on a book called The 103 uh, Amazing Facts About the um, Copper Color Race, uh, Copper Color Indians. And um, this video, I touched on the Ojiwa Indians, and I wanted to talk about tribe. Uh, I noticed I haven't done any tribes in a while. <laughs> and I apologize, apologize. I've been far, you know, away working a lot. So I thought. I need to do another video on another tribe. So I decided to do it on the Ojiwa since I showed you the dolls um, in the other episodes. So I said, hmm, I guess I'll do the Ojiwa Indians. But anyway, I saw this uh, particular uh, article. It says Ohio History Connection. You know, whenever... Um, well, in my spirit, I just noticed that a lot of these articles are written by um, European Americans, Caucasians, um, and not enough is written by us as the original people, as the Aboriginals. And I think it's very needed that we need to have our own encyclopedias um, and references um, and books with our own images that is written by us and for us um, and for the people so they can be educated about our culture and our history because these things um, have been passed down for generation to generation from our families and we have history too. And so a lot of things have been greywashed and I think it's time that we start. I know I'm getting ready to start. I mentioned before I'm starting a nonprofit. I'm going to keep you guys posted on that as well. And um, yeah, but this is the old uh, tribe. I know the picture has been a little gray white, been gray washed, you know. And I want you all to take notice. Um, with this picture, they tell you the dates. You know, they try to be slick with it. They they tell you the dates of when things took place. Like right here, the signing of the Treaty of Greenville, seventeen ninety five. And it says, as depicted by painter Howard Chandler Christie in 1945. So you see, I'm showing you right here how they do it with the gray wash. And this is a prime example of how they flood the media with false narratives. A lot of these artworks are, you know, were painted or created fairly recently. You know, some have been painted very fairly recently. And in order to change the narrative, they Gray washed the Indians to look almost the same color, not too much darker than the Caucasians. You see that? And this is how they do it. And you know, you have to notice read between the fine lines and look 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 at things much closer than you know than than what's just said, you know. Because if you just glanced over, you just said, oh, this was picture from 1795, but if you read it more detail with a fine eye, you start noticing things. Like this what well, this took place um in that 1795, but it's still based on the opinion uh and the biasness of the artist and which was created in 1945. So it's much later. So 
keep in mind, a lot of these artworks were created after the fact. I showed you all the original people. I'm going to go back to the blog. Well, I'm going to go into the Dolls Commission a little bit later, but I want to show you this. My point, just wanted to show you an example of what I'm talking about. The original artwork shows people looking us, no, like the Indians looking like us. You see this artwork? This was artwork was back in the 15, 1600s when it first started coming here, you know, 1500s. And then when you get over here, they have the Indians with the Ojiwa is a, one of the tribes is looking pale, a lot much paler and very pale and that's the reason why it's because uh, the original shows more of the truth but and that's why it's good to look at the original references of things you know when things were originally done uh, original documents um, during that time period as opposed to what is recently being created right right here because they want to keep the narrative going and Caucasians you know by falsely labeling them as being the American, the European Americans, as being the American, when actually we are the Americans, the American, the African Americans, AKA um, American Aborigines, we are the original. We are the ones that should be called the American because we were the first. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out to you all because from here on out, you know, you should just start noticing dates and, um, noticing time frames because this is how they throw you off you know we have to question everything just like dan caraway says question everything it says here the ojawa uh, the ojawa also known as the chippewa lived mainly in michigan uh, wisconsin wisconsin minnesota north dakota and ontario canada at the time of european contact they are part of the uh Neshibi, uh band of the Algonquin language speaking people. The Ojawa were closely related to the Ojawa and the Pototomi nation. They were sustained through hunting, fishing, and some agriculture. And see, this is the way they connect with nature. And this is what we need to go back to you guys. And that's what I was talking about. Then you go on down, it says the Ojawa participated in the fur trade with the French merchants and two groups often intermarried, which explains the pale skin. This is what I want to point out. A lot of the Indians met intermarried and that's where the lighter skin come from. Okay. And a lot of these people were allowed to continue their heritage because uh, when they start doing dolls commission, um, I'm going to go back over here. I have a book that tells you all about before Y'all yeah, might want to check out that video. Um, let me show it down right here. Dolls Commission book explains how they uh, moved the original people off their lands and put in the paler skin Indians, the ones that were married to grays and the ones that were already paler and lighter skin complexion were allowed to be on the reservations. And the ones that were darker complexion were the ones that were taken off and um and of course through the 13 colonies they were kidnapping a lot of the indigenous people especially the darker complexion ones and putting them into slavery and this is how this this done i'm sorry you guys i didn't mean to hit the wrong button let me go back Pulling it up right now. Uh, let's go back to while that loads up, we can go back over here to the Ojawa Indians and continue. It says Ojawa warriors fought with the French against the British in the French and Indian Wars following the French, the French defeat. The Ojawa assist the Pontiacs in the Pontiac Rebellion. Pontiac was a chief of the Ojawa, but his mother was Ojawa. During the American Revolution, the Ojawa allied themselves with the British. They feared colonial, uh, colonial settlers would continue to move into American Indian land if they did not receive assistance from the British. So this is something we should be knowing about and learning more. We, hear, we see this part a lot in the, 
um, maybe history books, but they don't go into more details about them in Indians, but they just shows that the, I do, I do recall, you know, when I was back in school, <laughs> back in the day, uh, they did talk about this, but they never explained the Indians. They scave over the, you know, the blacks and how they reclassify and explain this, everything. They just go straight into the war, who fought who and who won. And that's it. And then put more emphasis on the Caucasian and what they done, their accomplishment. But they very rarely talked about the um, American Aborigines at all. And this is something we should be teaching our children. And it says here, George Anthony Wayne defeated the Ojawa who fought along the American Indians of the Ohio country of the Battle of the Fallen Timbers. They gave up their claims to the land in Ohio with the signing of several treaties, including the Treaty of the Fort Harmer and the Treaty of Greenville, 1795, the Treaty of Fort um, Industry, 1805, the Treaty of Maumee Rapids, 1817. Despite a strong removal policy towards the most American Indian groups east of the Mississippi, the United States government did not force a majority of the Ojawa off the land. Rather, the Ojawa lost some of their territory in Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and North Dakota. They later regained some of the Midwestern territory as reservations. And so they, they just, and I have, you know, it's in these particular encyclopedias, they focus on the defeats um defeating the Indians. They didn't show none of the victories because some of the Indians did win some of the wars, which is very rarely highlighted in these particular books. The focus is the loss because they focus on the loss because that, like I said, there's power in the pen, there's power in words, there's power in frequencies. Instead of putting emphasis on the victories of the indigenous people, they put the emphasis on the Europeans, the Caucasian, and there's a reason for that, because they want to put more power in the frequency of words on the winning of their people, the Caucasians, the European Americans. So instead of the winning of the indigenous Aborigines, with AKA African Americans, winning some of these victories, and then um, and some of the natives, as well, the Native Americans too. Um, but let's scroll down. It says here, the history of the Ojawa Nation was considered to contain 15 discrete bands. Today, the Ojawa Nation is represented by numerous federal recognized tribes across the US and Canada. In 2005, approximately 176 Ojawa resided in the North Americas. And this number is pretty much um, not completely true because they don't include them American Aboriginals. Um, a lot of the numbers that they're calculating are hand selected or the grades. No or the mixed people that they allowed to be in these reservations. Um, the darker complexion people that were originally in the tribes were no longer counted for because they reclassified them as being black. And they kept much, you know, they hand select the mixed tribe that were intermarried with Caucasians or already mixed into the tribes. And that's why you have the pale skinned Indians of today. The ones, and these are not the true Indians. These are the more like the five-dollar Indians, to be exact. But let's draw down. Um, let's go into the next um, article. I found another article on Britannica, and I just want you all to notice their technique of uh, greywashing history. Their technique is to exclude any victories of the Aboriginals and put more emphasis on their victories only. And also only putting more recent pictures of the Indians so they can have more of the um, paler looking Indians as their depiction of who they are and they flood the media with it. And these pictures that I showed you before, let's draw back down right here, they will not show you these. <laughs> and of course, these paintings and artworks were created prior to, you know, right around the time when they first started getting here. But prior, you know, prior to and before and all that, they're going to be discolored. They're going to be dark in complexion. That's why you see the dolls. 
they are more discolored, a copper color, darker complexion, Indians. And um, that was changed by design. And um, yeah, and of course, the pit photos, uh, by the time the cameras came around, when you look at this picture here, let's see, right here, that's when they started mixing the Indians, the Indians intermarrying with Caucasians and mixed, you know, this admixture group of Indians, you know, and some of them might be the original, like this one, his hair is sort of curly, he got the dark complexion, but the, you know, but they start getting paler and paler as they intermarry more and more with Caucasians. And then now, five or ten generations down the line, you have these pale Caucasian looking Indians. And they're claiming being indigenous when actually they're more European than being indigenous. Because if they were, they would be looking more like us. And they took the original people out of the tribes. And that's exactly what happened. But anyway, the Ojiwa, I gotta show you the doll again. I like showing these dolls, see? This one right here in particular, these are the vintage ones right here. The little girl dolls. And I showed you uh, the original dolls that they had, what they look like. I'm gonna show you this other Ojiwa. I can get down to them right here. Vintage dolls. I thought I had another doll here that I saw. Um, let me show. Here they are. Some more Ojiwa dolls. I'll pull that up. And this is the doll mint box right here. Here they are. The darker complexion. This is what they look like. <laughs> and then you get over here. This is what they saw. It looks more like this artwork. And then you get over here. This is when they start making, you know, they start missing and looking lighter and lighter. And that's all that happened. And the same thing that's happening in Australia is you know, happening here. And it's more recent in Australia than here. And you can actually see them doing it, you know. And they tried to do the same thing in South Africa, but the people felt bad about that because they, they were trying to greywash their history too in South Africa by trying to say that the that the um, Europeans <laughs> were the original people when actually the, the um, dark complexion people were the originals, are the originals. But anyway, in this article right here, it's called Ajawa the People. Uh, doesn't... I'm not sure if they have an a, um, a author on here, but it says here, Ajawa is spelled Ajawi or Ajawe, also Chippewa and stuff named Anna, Anna she Naba, Nabi, and the eloquent speaking North American Indian tribe was lived in what is now Ontario, Manitoba, Manitoba, Canada, and Minnesota, North, North Dakota, U.S., from the Lake and west were onto the plains. The names themselves mean original people. See? <laughs> the original people are aboriginals. In Canada, these are Ojiwa was lived west of the Lake uh, Winnipeg uh, called the Salt Hulls, which was reported the relation of the 1640 of the annual report of Jes Jesuit missionaries in New France. The Ojiwa occupied our a comparatively restricted region near the St. Mary River in the upper peninsula of the present state of Michigan. They moved west to the fur trade, spending in response to the pressure from tribes to the east and new opportunities to the west. And see, here is this. And this was a very short article. They just, um, straight to the point, what happened, how they took over. And the emphasis is always on how they took over. <laughs> So it's not much to say about this right here, but if you notice, look at the picture. Y'all got to all notice the picture, the artwork. See, this picture was taken in 1875 through 1900. You see? And you see the hairdress and everything. And you see they look more, they still look brown. 
complexion. Some have curly hair, right? Him in particular in the middle. And um, this is when they're mixing with the um, the grays. They because they mentioned in the other article that we were on, explaining that they were mixing with the uh, French, and that's where the lighter complexion come from, which are Europeans, European Americans, or the Europeans in general. And like I said, this picture shows the transitioning. It just gives you the example of how they started transitioning. And, um, it speaks volumes through the 1975 uh, through 1900. Then you go back over here. Um, I want to draw it down. It's just the original artwork right here at the Aboriginals in the Americas, which is oftentimes hidden, but they're there. I keep on strolling it down. And right here with this Dawes Commission book I was talking about, this is why during the time period right in here, 1893 to 1914 right here is when they were um, shifting people around. Like I said, oh, this has happened very recently, you know? And a lot of the European Americans didn't get here until the early 1900s, most of them. So they really just, uh, just got here. You know, and just flooded the United the country with themselves. They brought their their own people over here to flood this continent, and that's why you have so many immigrants here right now. And a lot of the indigenous people, are, you know, are marginalized right now because of that. So, but this is my blog, you guys. Y'all can check it out. I'm gonna start adding more to it. <laughs> um, I've been. You know, working a lot, but now I got a little free time left. You know, I'm able to put up more information. And I will. But, and I just notate the dates right here. 1893, and then you go over here. That's when they started the wars, you know, all the wars. And then they started conquering, transitioning over. The Dawes Commission, the whole point of the Dawes Commission was to give the land to the to the Caucasians and to push the original people out. And the um, mixed people were put on reservations or the ones that are married to the Greys. And the ones who were darker complexion were either thrown into slavery prior to that or were just com completely marginalized. Um, well, my family here in Alabama, you no, know, in Alabama on my dad's side, they were sharecroppers. And so they were pretty much marginalized and taken off their land you know, they knew how to tend to the land in agriculture and they were farmers. Um, they were marginalized and, and had no other choice but to become sharecroppers. And some were able to get their land back and some weren't. But uh, and they still still in land to this very day. I'm going to show you this other article right here. I'm not going to touch on it um, on the times right here. The stealing of Indian land is still happening right now, Aboriginal land. And until we realize who we really are, that's, you know, it's the same thing. Black people, land, people's land was stolen. And then we're talking about the reparation. And that's why I said reparation needs to include all of this. It's just talking about slavery and nitpicking stuff. But if you don't understand your history and you're just talking about little nitpicky stuff or you know, a little bit about slavery, it's more intense than that, including with um, what happened with Jim, Jim Crow. Jim Crow was much more than, um, it's, it's about the lynchings, of course, but also it's about stolen lineage, heritage, you know, it's about erasing the original people out of existence. You know, a form of genocide, um, a form of um, erasing the people out of existence through Jim Crow and stealing the lands and stealing the lands. It still happens. Once we build something, they always come over and steal it. And in the same way, they push the original people out right here through the Dawes Commission. This 
how they did it. The land allotment, giving it, taking away from the original people, the indigenous people, and giving it back to the grave, taking, giving it to the graves. And this is the same thing. This is a chronic cycle. And the reason why it's a cycle is because we haven't identified who we really are. We lost touch as to who we really are. You know, we lost touch as to uh, what we are all about. And that's the saddest part. We don't know. We really don't know. And so this is going to be a conclusion of this particular video. I just wanted to share and talk about the Ojibwa tribe because um, I'm trying to keep a, a, you know, a breakdown, you know, explaining these articles and um, that we see in different encyclopedias, how they, how we are missing the connections of our history. Part of it is because not all of it is written. It's history based on Caucasian history, European American history, their history. And we're always excluded because they don't want to admit that the indigenous people, uh, the aborigines, that first of all, they don't want to admit that, that we are the aboriginals. You know, that's why they don't include the artwork that I was showing you. Let's go back. I show you the artwork again. <laughs> this is done through repetition so we can understand who we are. This artwork right here. This is what I'm talking about. You're not going to see this in the history books because this is what they don't want us to know. This is something that we need to know. And this is a factual information that has never been portrayed to us here in the United States. We've been denied access to this for so long. And now for the first time, we're actually seeing our own images of our own ancestors. And so this is what we were. This is how who we are. And this is what we need to reconnect to. This is what this article is about, that, this little list that I came up with. And the, this, um, by the way, this, this particular video is on YouTube. You want to check it out, it's there. How to tap back into your indigenous Aboriginal roots. The first thing is to remember who you are. And that's what's missing. We, and that's why I do these tribal videos. That's why I talk about the culture, talk about everything, because this is something that we, need to identify with. We don't, the problem is we're lacking identity and we're lacking identity because of lack of knowledge. And the lack of knowledge stems from systemic racism because they don't want us to go back to who we are because if they know who we are, they, we, our ancestors fought hard to keep this land, to keep our land. And we ended up losing it all. And that's why the only way we can regain it is to know who we are. And part of the reparation issue that we have is because we still don't know who we are. We're still talking about African slavery. And we don't even have it right as to where we originate from. So, yeah. <laughs> but I can go on and on, you guys. And this is going to be the conclusion of this video. Um, I would love to hear what you all think about um, this particular topic about the Ojiwa. Um, what do you all think? Um, uh, are, are any of you all related to the Ojibwa tribe? Have any of your family members um, talked about the Ojibwa? Uh, if so, please put in, in the description, but you know, in, in below. Um, I would love to hear from you all about the tribes that you're from. Uh, do you feel there's a need for more publications? Uh, media information for about the American Aborigines because we're oftentimes been, literally been erased from the history books, from books in general. It's like it's sad, but it's something that we have to bring back into the forefront. But please like this video, you guys, and thumbs up. And I would love to hear from you all. Uh, hit that notification bell below so you can get updates from me. Until next time, love and peace, family. Bye-bye.